Hi everyone and welcome to the start of a new series in Unreal Engine 4. In this series we're taking a look at how to use a gamepad to navigate a UI in the widgets. Uh, this is something I get asked quite a lot about. It is quite an obtuse and uh, abstract concept that in Unreal isn't really well documented. So naturally it, it can be quite confusing. So this will be a multi-part series and in this first part what we're focusing on is getting the gamepad to open up a menu and to also close a menu based on its inputs. We're also going to make it so it determines the difference between a keyboard input and a gamepad input. This can be quite useful for various things. So for example, if you're uh, playing the game on a keyboard and you access the menu, you may want to show the mouse cursor to the, to the user. Whereas in the gamepad instance, you don't want to do that. You want to hide the cursor and tell the gamepad to have certain focus somewhere. So we're going through that in this part um, using a very basic menu system. Okay, but over the over the various parts of the series, we'll be adding more complicated RPG esque. Uh, menu systems to our game. So this involves shoulder button navigation to toggle between different tabs or sub menus as well as um, sub menus inside of other widgets and accessing those and navigating your way around the whole entire screen. So let's get started with this first part. So the first part here we need to first of all set up a blank uh, menu for the player to actually spawn onto the screen. So what I'm going to do here is make a new folder in my root directory and we'll call this one UI. And inside this folder I'm going to create a new user interface widget blueprint. And we'll call this one player menu because it's the menu that the player is going to be spawning. And I'll put an underscore UI at the end of it so I know that's a widget. Open this up and we'll do something, as I say, very basic for this first part. So I'm literally just going to put a border inside my canvas panel and I'm going to tell that border to fill the whole entire screen. So if I tell the anchor to fill and I change all the offsets to zero, it will fill the whole entire screen, like so. And if I scroll right down to where it says content color and opacity and, oh, sorry, no, appearance brush color, we're going to change the brush color to whatever you like. I'm doing a sort of semi-transparent gray, which I've already really saved up here. Click OK. So now I've got a basic menu, OK? Nothing fancy. It's just going to show this color onto the screen. So I'm going to click Compile and close this for now. We'll be returning to this in due time. So to actually get it working on the gamepad, we need to set up the gamepad inputs to allow control for the menu. So if I go to my edit options and go to predict, uh, project settings and inside here I'll find the input link on the left hand side. Click on that will get you the action mappings and access mappings. We want to create a new action mapping so click on the new action mapping and we're going to call this one menu and it's here that we want to set up the multiple keys that can be used for this. So for a keyboard I'm going to use the tab key and for a gamepad I'm going to use the what they call the gamepad special right button, which essentially is the start button on like a PlayStation controller or an Xbox controller. So both of these keys will trigger the menu event. I can close that down, and now we've got to handle where that event will be. So for the best place for this be would be on a custom controller. So I'm going to go onto my first person BP folder, blueprints, and go to where the rest of them are. And in here, I'm going to create add new blueprint class and choose a new player controller. And in there, I'm going to name it RPG controller. And I'm going to open this up. Now on here, on my event graph, I will now be able to use that menu event that we just set up in our project settings. So I go menu and you'll see menu. So this event will fire whenever I push the tab key or my start button on a controller. So if I want to determine what one is being pushed, I can use the key here to determine that. And the simplest way of doing it is I'll drag out from here and just do is gamepad key. So as you would imagine, this will turn true if we're pushing it on the gamepad and false if we're pushing it onto a keyboard or anything else for that matter. Being a boolean, this can go into a branch to handle 
that return value. So we're going to head on true, and on true, we're going to create widget, and we're going to choose our player menu UI class. We're then going to, on the return value, promote that to a variable called player menu. And from that, we're going to add it to the viewport. So this is creating the menu, uh, the widget. This is uh, storing it and saving it as a re uh, reference. And this is actually rendering it to the screen. Once we've done that, we need to tell it the game mode, uh, input mode, sorry, to be UI only rather than gamepad inputs. That way, when I push game, my gamepad controls, it doesn't move the character or anything like that. It doesn't register another menu button. It'll just register it on the UI instead, which is what we want. So I'm going to set input mode to UI only. This thing requires a player controller. Now we're currently in a controller, so I can use a self reference for this. And we need a widget to focus on, and we're going to take it to focus on the player menu widget. So drag that out, choose get, and plug it in. And click compile. Now, if we're doing it on the keyboard, we'll do it exactly the same. So I'm going to drag this out, copy, and close, uh, paste that in with control V. Plug it into false. So exactly the same, except I also want to show the mouse cursor. So set show mouse cursor, and I will make that true. And click compile. So we're done here. We can close this. And we want to tell our game mode. So go to first person game mode in this case. And we'll tell it that the player controller it's using is the RPG controller. Click compile, and we can close that. So now if we push play, we can push the start button on our controller to open up the menu. And I can't do nothing else yet, but it's showing. That's a good sign. And if I was to push play and use the tab key, you can see it's showing there just fine too. So now how to turn it off. Because the input mode is set to UI only, we need to tell the UI to handle the inputs now. So we need to go to our UI. And in our UI, we need to go to the graph editor. And we need to tell the functions to override a certain function. So in the functions on the left-hand side, choose override, and you want to use on key down. And this will extend the on key down event that comes inherent with a widget. Now, this is just a generic on key down event. We need to be a bit more specific with what key we're actually pushing, but we can use this to handle various inputs. So first thing to do is get the key that's being pushed. So we go in key event, we can drag this out and get the key. We then want to be able to determine what key is being pushed and then react accordingly to that key. Now the way we can do that is a switch on a string. So if I right click and just do switch on string and plug that in, the switch on string event Basically, we'll take various cases, which we'll go through in a moment, and react based on what the input is and matching outputs. So here I need a string. So we need to get from here to here, which is a key to a string. So from the key, we can get a display name. And then from there, we can turn the text into a string. Let's just space these out a bit. So on the switch on string event, we can click on here and then choose add pin. It will now add case zero to our outputs. On case zero, if we go down to detail settings, we can change the name of that to match the name of the key that we want to check. So the key we want to check is gamepad special right. Now spelling of this does matter. So you want to make sure you're spelling it correctly. If you're getting errors, that may be the common issue. So now when we push in gamepad special right, it will go down here. Default is called when it's anything but this. Okay, so I'm going to use gamepad special right and we're going to make a new function to close the menu. So go to your functions list and go new function. I'm going to call it close menu. From here, we can then tell it to remove from parent. 
and then we need to get the player controller to tell the input mode back to game only and if we are menu we want to make sure uh, if we are using the keyboard we want to make sure the mouse cursor is set to false so that's nice and hidden compile that and go back to your key down event and we're going to drag that close menu function out and connect it to gamepad special right after that we want to connect it to the return node and you see the return node needs a return value if I compile that I'm going to get a warning message I want to make sure I'll tell it that this is handled now and what that means is that the way inputs work is when it receives an input this is at the top of a list basically a hierarchy and this will receive an input if it's not handled then it'll go down through the list to the next item and then it'll check if it's handled there and it'll keep doing that over and over until it gets to the bottom if we tell it it's handled here that means it stops running it everywhere else and quits out of the hierarchy so on handled in this case on default though we want to do a return node again but we want it to be unhandled so that way it moves on from the hierarchy we'll click compile because we're done here go to your design view and the last thing we need to do is make sure that this widget is focusable so on your player menu UI the root of your hierarchy click on this and then go to the right hand side and tick the is focusable tick box to be true compile and now close when we push play now and we push the start button on our controller it will spawn the menu and if I push it again it will hide the menu and return gameplay back to the game and that's all there is to it so in this first part we managed to get the menu to show and hide based on gamepad inputs in the next part we will then work on shoulder buttons and getting them to work with uh, navigating between different tabs or different sub menus inside of our um, UI. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see the next part right now, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryanaley, where a donation of simply $1 a month will get you access to this video plus many more. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons for their support thus far, and thank you for everyone's comments and feedback for all the videos that I'm putting out. If you have any suggestions or feedback you want to leave me, please leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thanks very much and I'll see you guys next time.